Hello friends, my name is Ruchika and I welcome you to the English Academy. Here in our series of Learn English Speaking and Translation through Hindi, my today's topic with you is direct and indirect speech. We call them Pratyaksh Paroksh Vakya. Chalhi iske baare mein kuch jankari hasil kare. हमारा सबसे पहला सवाल ये है कि डायरेक्ट स्पीच जिसे हम कहते हैं प्रत्यक्ष वाक्य ये होते क्या है दोस्तों किसी द्वारा बोले गए वाक्य को ज्यो का त्यों इट मीन्स एज इट इज ज्यो का त्यों लिख देना या फिर बताना उसे हम प्रत्यक्ष वाक्य या फिर डायरेक्ट स्पीच कहते हैं Now let us see an example of a sentence where we have used direct speech. Adhyapika ne vidyarthiyo se kaha tum ja sakte ho. Ab jo vakya maine yaha pe inverted commas ke beech mein likha hai ye exact wordings hai jo adhyapika ne kahi hai. Jaise ke taise hi maine jiyo ke tiyo wo shabd yaha par likh diye tum ja sakte ho. और जब ऐसे कोई शब्द हम रिप्रोड्यूस करते हैं जो किसी और वक्ता ने बोले हैं तो हम क्या बोल रहे हैं हम बोल रहे हैं प्रत्यक्ष वाक्य हम एज इट इज किसी के बोले हुए शब्द बोल रहे हैं अब इसी वाक्य को जब हम इंग्लिश में ट्रांसलेट करते हैं द टीचर सेड टू द स्टूडेंट्स यू कैन गो so this wording you can go this is exactly what has been spoken by the teacher and this sort of a sentence is called direct speech i hope it is clear to you let's go ahead now we'll talk about indirect speech what is indirect speech जिसे हम परोक्ष वाक्य कहते हैं किसी द्वारा बोले गए शब्दों को जब हम अपने शब्दों में कहते हैं या लिखते हैं तो उसे परोक्ष वाक्य या फिर इनडायरेक्ट स्पीच कहा जाता है लेट अस सी एन एग्जांपल टू मेक दिस कॉन्सेप्ट वेरी क्लियर दोस्तों देखिए वाक्य है अध्यापिका ने विद्यार्थियों से कहा कि वे जा सकते थे नाउ दिस इज द सेम सेंटेंस विच अर्यर आई हैव डिस्कस्ड इन डायरेक्ट स्पीच यर आई हैव कन्वर्टेड द डायरेक्ट स्पीच इन टू इन डायरेक्ट स्पीच नाउ हियर वट आई हैव डन इज अध्यापिका के जो शब्द थे तुम जा सकते हो अध्यापिका के जो कहे हुए एग्जैक्ट वर्ड्स थे वो थे तुम जा सकते हो इनको जब मैंने रिफ्रेज करके अपने शब्दों में कहा तो मैंने कहा अध्यापिका ने विद्यार्थियों से कहा कि वे जा सकते थे तो तुम जा सकते हो की जगह पर आ गया वे जा सकते थे और अब मैंने अध्यापिका के शब्दों को अपने शब्दों में बदल कर बोला तो ये वाक्य बन गया परोक्ष वाक्य परोक्ष वाक्य जिसे हम इंग्लिश में इनडायरेक्ट स्पीच कहते हैं नो लेट एस सी हाउ यू विल ट्रांसलेट दिस सेंटेंस इन टू इंग्लिश इट्स नॉट एट ऑल डिफिकल्ट द फर्स्ट पार्ट मीन्स द सेम दैट इज द टीचर सेट टू द स्टूडेंट्स एंड देन हियर कम्स अ न्यू वर्ड दैट दिस कम्स इन प्लेस ऑफ की दैट दे कुड गो when this was direct speech it was the teacher said to the students you can go now friends you can say how this direct speech you can go has converted into indirect speech and it has become they could go now how do we change this what are the rules 
let us go ahead and see. Now here is something very important for you. प्रत्यक्ष और परोक्ष वाक्यों के दो भाग होते हैं जो कि अपने में संपूर्ण वाक्य हैं। Both these two parts of direct and indirect speech are complete sentences in themselves. Let us go and talk about these two parts of direct and indirect speech. Now the two parts, the जो दो भाग होते हैं प्रत्यक्ष और परोक्ष वाक्य के वो क्या हैं? पहला भाग है reported verb और दूसरा भाग है reported speech. एक-एक करके इनके बारे में बात करते हैं। जो पहला भाग है वो यह बताता है कि किस व्यक्ति ने किस व्यक्ति से बात कही। We say that the first part which we call the reporting verb. Reporting verb is that sentence which tells us who said the words and to whom they were said. Now here let us see where is the reporting verb. Where is that sentence in which we talk about who said the words and to whom they were said. This is an example sentence. अध्यापिका ने विद्यार्थियों से कहा, तुम जा सकते हो। अब इसमें सबसे पहले तो हम ढूंढते हैं कि दो वाक्य कौन से हैं। फ्रेंड्स यहाँ पर मैं एक लाइन लगा रही हूँ। लाइन से पहले वाला हिस्सा एक वाक्य है और लाइन के बाद वाला हिस्सा दूसरा वाक्य है। चलिए अब हम देखते हैं कि रिपोर्टिंग वर्ब पहला वाक्य जहाँ पर हमें ये पता लगता है कि किसने कहा और किससे कहा। यहाँ पर देखते हैं पहला वाक्य क्या है? अध्यापिका ने विद्यार्थियों से कहा। तो जैसा मैंने आपको कहा इस वाक्य से हमें पता लग रहा है who said to whom। अध्यापिका ने विद्यार्थियों से कहा। खुद में ये एक पूर्ण वाक्य है। पूर्ण वाक्य कैसे है ये? इसमें एक करता है अध्यापिका इसमें एक कर्म है जो कि है विद्यार्थी और इसमें एक क्रिया भी है जो कि है कहना पूरा संदेश एक पूरा मतलब हमको बता पा रहा है so this is a complete sentence now let us see the reporting verb in the English translation of this sentence. Now this sentence in English it becomes the teacher said to the students you can go. Now here again I am drawing a line of demarcation between the first and the second sentence. Now let us put our focus to the first part. This is the reporting verb. The part of the sentence which tells us who said to whom. That is called reporting verb. And in this sentence the reporting verb is the teacher said to the students. First of all the subject is the teacher. Then let's go ahead. The next word is said. This is the verb. This is the action word. And then we have the object that is the students. So with this we can say that this is a complete sentence. The teacher said to the students. And this complete sentence which answers the question who said to whom is called reporting verb. अब बात करते हैं वाक्य के दूसरे भाग की जो दूसरा वाक्य है कंप्लीट उसमें क्या होता है उसमें कही गई बात बताई जाती है जिसको हम प्रत्यक्ष वाक्य में इन्वर्टेड कॉमास के बीच में लिखते हैं इट इस कॉल्ड द रिपोर्टेड स्पीच रिपोर्टेड स्पीच टेल्स अस द एक्सेक्ट वर्ड्स व्हिच हैव बीन स्पोकन बाय समवन within inverted commas. 
Now we have the same example and here we will talk about the reported speech. This is the demarcation which separates the two distinct sentences and here now we will talk about the second sentence. Tum ja sakte ho. Ab dekhte hain ki ye kaise ek sampurna vakya hai. Isme bhi ek karta hai jo ki hai tum. Ja sakna. Ye hai kriya. Tum ja sakte ho. ये एक संपूर्ण वाक्य है चलिए अब इसे इंग्लिश में ट्रांसलेट करते हैं यू कैन गो फिर से इस वाक्य में यू जो है वो है सब्जेक्ट और इस वाक्य में प्रेडिकेट है जो वर्ब पार्ट है वो है कैन गो दिस इज द वर्ब एंड व्हेन दिस सेंटेंस हैज द सब्जेक्ट एंड द वर्ब दैट इज द सब्जेक्ट एंड द प्रेडिकेट it makes this sentence also a complete sentence and also this sentence is conveying us a complete meaning you can go means tum ja sakte ho to ise ke sath hame ye pata lagta hai ki kaise direct aur indirect speech dono mein do vakya hote hain ab hum baat karte hain indirect speech ki friends परोक्ष वाक्य में हम क्या करते हैं कि हम कोई भी संयोजक का प्रयोग करते हैं जैसे कि की और हम उसका प्रयोग करके इन दो वाक्यों को जोड़ देते हैं इन इनडायरेक्ट स्पीच we use the conjunctions like that if whether to in order to join the two distinct sentences the two distinct sentences that is the reporting verb and the reported speech now let us see the same example and here we can compare the direct speech and the indirect speech adhyapika ne kaha tum ja sakte ho this is pratyaksh vakya ya fir direct speech the teacher said you can go now the points which you have to remember when you are writing direct speech first of all you have to put the second part of the sentence that is the reporting speech within inverted commas the second point is first letter of the first word with which you begin the reporting speech this has to be in capital letter and you have to put a comma in order to separate the reported verb with the reporting speech now let us see when we translate this into indirect speech adhyapika ne kaha ki hum ja sakte the to yahan par jo dhyan rakhne wali cheeze hain wo hai sabse pehle humne ek sanyojak ka prayog kiya in dono vakyon ko jodne ke liye comma bhi hat gaya inverted commas bhi hat gaye aur tum ja sakte ho tum ka ban gaya hum हो का बन गया थे इसके क्या नियम है इसके क्या रूल्स हैं उसकी मैं बातचीत करूंगी आपके साथ आगे चलकर द टीचर सेड दैट वी कुड गो सो वॉट आर द न्यू थिंग्स विच यू कैन सी इन दिस डायरेक्ट स्पीच एंड दिस इनडायरेक्ट स्पीच इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव यूज अ कंजंक्शन टू ज्वाइन the two parts of the sentence that was reported verb and reporting speech secondly there is no comma there are no inverted commas there is no capital over here and you has changed into v and can has changed into could so we follow certain rules for this conversion which we will go ahead and see 
Now let us see all the rules which we will cover when we have to convert direct speech into indirect speech. Now the rules which we will cover are with relation to pronouns, with relation to tenses, with relation to auxiliary verbs, some other words which change when we convert direct into indirect speech, rules relating to historical truths, universal truths and habitual facts. Now we will discuss them one by one. First of all, let us see the rules for changing the pronouns when we convert direct speech into indirect speech. Here is a list of pronouns. Pronouns are divided into first person that is the vakta or the speaker, second person that is the dusra vyakti and the third person that is anya vyakti. Now when we talk about the first person as the subject in the sentence, जिसे हम करता कहते हैं, तो हम use करते हैं I singular के लिए और we use करते हैं plural के लिए, जैसे हम हिंदी में मैं या हम का प्रयोग करते हैं. जब हम first person की बात करते हैं as the object of the sentence, कर्म के रूप में जब हम first person को use करते हैं, English में हम मुझे के स्थान पर me use करते हैं और हमें के स्थान पर us. और जब हम first person की बात करते हैं, कोई possession दिखाने के लिए, कोई संबंध जताने के लिए, तो हम मेरा के स्थान पर my use करेंगे और हमारा के स्थान पर our. Let's go ahead to the second person. When we talk about the second person as the subject of the sentence, यानि के करता के रूप में, तब हम तुम या आप की जगह पर यू का इस्तेमाल करेंगे और जब हम बात करेंगे दूसरे व्यक्ति की ऑब्जेक्ट के रूप में जिसे हम कन कहते हैं तो हम तुम्हें या आपको के स्थान पर भी यू का ही प्रयोग करेंगे और जब सेकंड पर्सन की बात होगी पोजीशन दिखाने के लिए या संबंध जताने के लिए तो हम तुम्हारा या फिर आपका के स्थान पर योर का प्रयोग करेंगे now let us come to the third person जिसे हम अन्य व्यक्ति कहते हैं। Friends जब हम अन्य व्यक्ति की बात करेंगे कर्ता की तरह like the subject of the sentence, then instead of वह या वो या वे के स्थान पर हम लगाएंगे he या फिर she, पुरुष के लिए he आएगा और स्त्री के लिए she, या फिर हम it प्रयोग कर सकते हैं किसी निर्जीव वस्तु के लिए दे भी यूज हो सकता है प्लूरल के लिए और किसी का नाम भी लगाया जा सकता है जब थर्ड पर्सन की बात होगी ऑब्जेक्ट के रूप में तो उसे या उन्हें की जगह हिम हर इट या देम का प्रयोग हो सकता है और जब थर्ड पर्सन की बात होगी कोई पोजीशन या संबंध दिखाने के लिए तब हम उसका उसकी या उनकी के स्थान पर हिज her, its या their इन चारों में से किसी का भी प्रयोग करेंगे। Now let us come to the first rule in relation to pronouns. When the pronoun in the reporting speech is in first person, reporting speech means जो किसी की कही हुई बात है। जब reporting speech में जो pronoun जो सर्वनाम इस्तेमाल हुआ है, वो first person में है, वो प्रथम व्यक्ति में है, तो वो रिपोर्टिंग वर्ब के सब्जेक्ट के हिसाब से बदलेगा सब्जेक्ट यानी कि रिपोर्टिंग वर्ब के कर्ता के हिसाब से बदलेगा क्या मतलब है इसका अगर कर्ता फर्स्ट पर्सन है तो फिर जो रिपोर्टिंग स्पीच में प्रोनाउन था वो भी फर्स्ट पर्सन हो जाएगा अगर रिपोर्टिंग वर्ब का कर्ता सेकंड पर्सन है तो रिपोर्टिंग स्पीच का जो सर्वनाम है वो भी सेकंड पर्सन का लगाया जाएगा और अगर रिपोर्टिंग वर्ब का जो करता है वो थर्ड पर्सन का है तो फिर रिपोर्टिंग स्पीच में जो सर्वनाम है उसको भी हम बदलकर थर्ड पर्सन में ही इस्तेमाल करेंगे चलिए एक एग्जांपल देखते हैं ताकि आप इस रूल को अच्छे से समझ सकें राम ने मुझे कहा मैं जा रहा हूं this sentence becomes Ram said to me, I am going. Now just now the first rule I have told you that if in the reporting speech there is first person. So here the pronoun in the reporting speech is I. 
I is first person. So it will convert according to the subject of the reporting verb. Subject of the reporting verb is Ram. Ram kya hai? Kisi ka naam hai. Aur naam kis category mein aata hai? Third person ki category mein. इसका क्या मतलब हुआ जो मैंने नियम बताया था कि आई बदल जाएगा थर्ड पर्सन के हिसाब से और थर्ड पर्सन के हिसाब से आई का क्या बन जाएगा ही तो ये जो हमारा सेंटेंस था डायरेक्ट स्पीच में राम सेड टू मी आई एम गोइंग व्हेन वी कन्वर्टेड इनटू इनडायरेक्ट स्पीच इट विल बिकम राम सेड टू मी दैट he was going now this i has been converted into he let us see one more example tumne radha se kaha main padh raha hu in english this sentence is you said to radha i am studying now when we have to convert it into indirect speech we have to take care that this i this is the first person this will convert according to the subject of the reporting verb the subject of the reporting verb here is you and you is second person so this i will also convert into second person and when we convert this i into second person it will become you you said to radha i am studying now when we convert this into indirect speech it becomes you said to radha that you were studying so just now we had decoded this that this i will turn into you according to the first rule which i have told you for conversions of pronouns let us see one more example unhone mujhe kaha hum khel rahe hain they said to me we are playing so here we are concerned with this we this pronoun what will this become when we convert it into indirect speech now v is also first person as i told you that first person in the reporting speech will convert according to the subject of the reported verb here the subject you have to really be careful to identify the subject of the reported verb this is very important that you correctly identify this now the subject of this reported verb that is they they is third person you can just refer to the table which i gave you initially they is third person so we will convert this v into third person now friends when v is converted into third person it becomes they they said to me we are playing this becomes they said to me that they were playing so this v gets converted into they now let us see rule number 2 this states that when the pronoun in reporting speech is in the second person it changes according to the object that is the karm of the reporting verb now let us see an example again to understand this rule maine ram se kaha tum nalayak ho yahan par jis sarvanam ki hum baat kar rahe hain wo hai tum tum kya hai second person this sentence in english becomes i said to ram you are unworthy nalayak ko hum unworthy kehte hain aur 
तुम के स्थान पर हमने यू का प्रयोग किया यू इज प्रोनाउन इन सेकेंड पर्सन ना फ्रेंड्स आई टोल्ड यू द सेकेंड रूल दैट इज देन इट विल गेट कन्वर्टेड अकॉर्डिंग टू द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ द रिपोर्टेड वर्ब ना हियर द ऑब्जेक्ट इज राम दिस इज इन द थर्ड पर्सन this is a name of someone which comes under the category of third person so this you will get converted into third person and it will become he because it is a masculine gender i said to ram you are unworthy so this when converted into indirect speech becomes i said to ram that he was unworthy so just now as i decoded for you you gets converted into he there is another example for you teacher ne mujhe kaha tum acche vidyarthi ho in english this sentence is teacher said to me you are a good student now again here you can see the pronoun which is there in the reported speech this is you which is the second person the object of the reported verb is me and it is in first person so even this you will get converted into first person and the you of the second person will become i in the first person the sentence in direct speech was teacher said to me you are a good student and this sentence when converted into indirect speech it becomes teacher told me that i was a good student so friends you has been converted into i according to the second rule of conversions of pronouns i said to you maine tumhe kaha i said to you tum chup raho you keep quiet the pronoun which is there in the reported speech that is you this is second person so it will get converted according to the object of the reported verb here the object of the reported verb is you which is again second person you will remain you only because it is already in the second person i said to you you keep quiet now this sentence in indirect speech will be i said to you that you keep quiet so again You will remain like that as it is. चलिए अब देखते हैं थर्ड रूल क्या है थर्ड रूल स्टेट दैट वेन द प्रोनाउन इन द रिपोर्टिंग स्पीच इज इन दर्ड पर्सन इट विल रिमेन अनचेंज इन द रिपोर्टिंग वर्क लेट एस सी सम एग्जाम्पल्स टू मेक दिस क्लियर द फर्स्ट सेंटेंस इज मैंने उसे कहा राम मूर्ख है तो यहां पर राम जो शब्द है ये क्या है किसी का नाम है यानी कि ये तीसरा व्यक्ति का सर्वनाम है तो हम इसे चेंज नहीं करेंगे दिस विल रिमेन अनचेंज इन इंग्लिश दिस सेंटेंस इज आई सेड टू हिम राम इज अ फूल सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस वर्ड राम as this is in the third person so according to the rule number 3 this will remain unchanged i said to him ram is a fool and in indirect speech it becomes i said to him that ram was a fool so you can see the pronoun ram remains the same here is one more example ma ne papa se kaha ve sham ko aayenge now when we say it in english we will say mom said to dad 
दे विल कम इन द इवनिंग तो यहां पर दे दिस इज अ थर्ड पर्सन प्लूडल सो द आंसर टू दिस इज मॉम सेट टू डैड दैट दे वुड बी कमिंग इन द इवनिंग सो हियर द प्रोनाउन दे has remained as it is even in the indirect speech okay let's go ahead to the next set of rules which are for changing the tenses when we convert the direct speech into indirect speech the rule number 1 is agar reporting verb mein vartaman kal ya fir bhavishya kal which means if there is present or future tense in the reporting verb then रिपोर्टेड स्पीच का काल नहीं बदलेगा द टेंस ऑफ द रिपोर्टेड स्पीच विल नॉट चेंज हियर इज एन एग्जाम्पल यर प्रेजेंट टेंस हैज बीन यूज वह मुझे कहता है दिस इज अ प्रेजेंट टेंस तुम समझदार हो ही सेज टू मी यू आर वाइस सो एज दिस इज प्रेजेंट टेंस when we will convert it into indirect speech the tense will not change so let us see the answer he says to me you are wise and in indirect speech it becomes he says to me that i am wise so this part of the sentence remains the same the tense does not change let us see an example of future tense राम मुझे कहेगा मैं सच्चा हूं राम विल से टू मी आई एम ट्रू सो द टेंस ऑफ दिस रिपोर्टिंग वर्ब इज फ्यूचर टेंस विल आया है तो ये एक फ्यूचर की बात है चलिए इसका उत्तर देखते हैं राम विल से टू मी दैट ही इज ट्रू तो यहां पे फिर से जो टेंस है वाक्य का वो सेम रहा है नाउ लेट अस सी द सेकंड रूल विद रिगार्ड टू टेंसेस अगर रिपोर्टिंग वर्ब में भूतकाल है दैट इज इफ देयर इज पास्ट टेंस इन द रिपोर्टिंग वर्ब देन रिपोर्टेड स्पीच का जो काल है वो बदलेगा और कैसे बदलेगा प्रेजेंट टेंस को पास्ट टेंस में बदलना है प्रेजेंट इनडेफिनेट को पास्ट इनडेफिनेट में बदल देंगे प्रेजेंट कंटिन्यूस विल चेंज इन टू पास्ट कंटिन्यूस प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट विल चेंज इन टू पास्ट परफेक्ट एंड प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट कॉन्टिन्यूस विल चेंज इन टू पास्ट परफेक्ट कॉन्टिन्यूस वी हैव एग्जाम्पल्स फॉर ऑल ऑफ दीज लेट सी दम वन बाय वन द फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल इज ऑफ प्रेजेंट इनडेफिनेट टेंस विच विल चेंज इन टू पास्ट इनडेफिनेट टेंस he had said to me we play so the tense of the reporting speech here that is we play this is present indefinite so according to the rule this will change into past indefinite tense we will say he had said to me that they played let us see the example of present continuous tense Present continuous tense will change into past continuous tense. He had said to me. Now this is mandatory. This means that the reporting verb is in past tense. Only when the reporting verb is in past tense that we will apply these rules. So this is very important. ये तो होना ही चाहिए. उसके बाद हम इसको देखेंगे. अब इसका क्या टेंस है वी आर प्लेइंग दिस इज प्रेजेंट कंटिन्यूस सो दिस विल गेट कन्वर्टेड इन टू पास्ट कंटिन्यूस ही हैड सेड टू मी दैट दे वर प्लेइंग सो वर प्लेइंग दिस इज पास्ट कंटिन्यूस टेंस नाउ हियर आई हैव एन एग्जांपल ऑफ प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट टेंस व्हिच विल चेंज इन टू पास्ट परफेक्ट टेंस अगेन द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज ही हैड सेड टू मी that means it is past tense now let us see the second part of the sentence this is we have 
plate. This is present perfect tense. Now when this will be converted into indirect speech, it will become he had said to me that they had played. So have played which was present perfect has converted into had played that is past perfect tense. The next example is for present perfect continuous tense which will change into past perfect continuous. He had said to me, we have been playing. So it will get converted into past perfect continuous. He had said to me that they had been playing. Now here is the continuation of the second rule. Agar reporting verb mein bhoot kaal hai. Means the reporting verb should be in past tense. Then the second thing, another thing which we have to do is reported speech ka jo kaal hai wo aise badlega. Agar past indefinite tense hai to wo past perfect tense ban jayega. Agar past continuous tense hai to wo past perfect continuous tense ban jayega. Or agar past perfect hai ya fir past perfect continuous hai to wo as it is hi rahenge. Iske bhi udharan hai chaliye dekhte hai. Past indefinite ka example hai jo ki past perfect ban jayega. He had said to me, we played. This is past indefinite. When we will convert it into indirect speech, it will become he had said to me that they had played. They had played. This is past perfect tense. Let us see the next example. This is when past continuous will change into past perfect continuous. He had said to me, we were playing. This is past continuous tense. It will change into past perfect continuous into indirect speech. He had said to me that they had been playing. Now here is the example of past perfect tense. In past perfect tense, the tense will not change. The direct speech is he had said to me we had played. And the indirect speech is he had said to me that they had played. So the tense remains the same that is past perfect tense. The next example is of past perfect continuous tense. Here again the tense will not change. So the direct speech is he had said to me we had been playing. And the indirect speech is he had said to me that they had been playing. So only the pronoun has changed. The next set of rules is for changing the auxiliary verbs when we convert direct speech into indirect speech. Now when we will convert direct speech into indirect speech, will will convert into would, shall will be converted into should or would, may will become might, can will become could, do or does will become did. Is or am or are will become was or were according to the number. Has or have will become had. Let us see an example where we will notice the change of the auxiliary verbs. He had said to me, we will be playing. So here the auxiliary verb in reported speech is will. When we convert this into indirect speech, he had said to me that they would be playing. So friends, will becomes would. Let us see another example. He had said to me, you shall be playing. So when we will convert this into indirect, this sentence will become He had said to me that I should be playing. So here the auxiliary verb shall gets converted into should. Let us see one more example where we can see the changes in the auxiliary verb. He had said to me, you may play. 
When we convert it into indirect speech, it becomes He had said to me that I might play. So the may becomes might. So another example with relating to the auxiliary verb do. He had said to me, do you play? So this is a question. In indirect speech it becomes, he had asked me that, did I play? So the do becomes did. Let's see one more example. He had said to me, does he play? So friends, this does will again convert into did. He had asked me that, did he play? Here is another example where we will see the conversion of the auxiliary verb is. He had said to me, Raj is fat. In indirect speech, this sentence will become, He had said to me that Raj was fat. So is will get converted into was. Here is the auxiliary verb am. He had said to me, I am fat. In indirect speech, it will become, he had said to me that he was fat. So the am gets converted into was. Here we will see the conversion of the auxiliary verb have. He had said to me, I have a camera. This have will get converted into had when we convert it into indirect speech. He had said to me that he had a camera. Here is the auxiliary verb has. He had said to me, the boy has a camera. In indirect speech, the sentence will become, he had said to me that the boy had a camera. Now here are some important rules where we change some more words when we convert direct speech into indirect speech. Convert direct into indirect, here becomes there, this becomes that, these becomes those, now will be converted into then, thus becomes so, hence becomes thence, ago becomes before. I would suggest that you try and learn these conversions. The next set of words is today becomes that day, tomorrow will be converted into the next day, yesterday will be written as the previous day. Last night will become the previous night. Last week will become the previous week. Tonight will become that night. The next day will become the following day. So this is a list of the words, how they get converted from direct into indirect speech. Now here is the next set of rules which relates to historical truths, universal truths and habitual facts. How we will convert them when we convert from direct to indirect speech. Friends, irrespective of the tense of the reporting verb, the tense of the reported speech will not change. So when we are talking about historical truths, universal truths, habitual facts, the tense of the reported speech will not change. Here is an example of a historical truth. टीचर ने मुझे कहा हमने आजादी की लड़ाई 1947 में जीती थी अब इस वाक्य को जब मैंने परोक्ष वाक्य में कन्वर्ट किया टीचर ने मुझे कहा कि हमने आजादी की लड़ाई 1947 में जीती थी द डायरेक्ट सेंटेंस वाज टीचर सेड टू मी वी वन द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल इन 1947 And the indirect speech is, teacher said to me that we won the freedom struggle in 1947. So here you can see the reporting speech. We won the freedom struggle in 1947. And here also the tense is same. We won the freedom struggle in 1947. Here is an example of a universal truth. Usne mujhe kaha, बुध ग्रह सूरज की सबसे पास है परोक्ष वाक्य में ये बन गया उसने मुझे कहा कि बुध ग्रह सूरज के सबसे पास है इन इंग्लिश द डायरेक्ट स्पीच वॉज ही सेट टू मी 
Mercury is the nearest planet to the sun. Now this is a universal truth. So the tense of this reporting speech will not change. When we convert this sentence into indirect speech, it will become, he said to me that Mercury is the nearest planet to the sun. So here you can see the reporting speech that is Mercury is the nearest planet to the sun. Mercury is the nearest planet to the sun. So both direct and indirect speech, this tense of the reporting speech will be the same. Here is an example of a habitual fact. Radha ne hume kaha, main har roz padhti hu. To ye Radha ki ek aadat hai, jo wo har roz karti hai. Radha ne hume kaha ki, wo har roz padhti hai. Main har roz padhti hu, wo har roz padhti hai. Kaal ek hi hai. In English, the direct speech was, Radha told us, I study every day. And the indirect speech is, Radha told us that she studies every day. So the tense remains the same. Now here are some sentences for your practice. Usne mujhe kaha, Mera bhai har subah chhe baje utta hai. Iska paroksh vakya hai, Usne mujhe kaha ki, Uska bhai har subah chhe baje utta hai. तो आगे चल के इसका उत्तर देखते हैं इंग्लिश में ये वाक्य क्या बनेंगे He told me my brother wakes up at 6 every morning and in indirect speech the sentence will be He told me that his brother woke up at 6 every morning Let us see the next sentence अध्यापक ने लड़कों से कहा पृथ्वी सूरज के चारों ओर घूमती है परोक्ष वाक्य है अध्यापक ने लड़कों से कहा कि पृथ्वी सूरज के चारों ओर घूमती है चलिए इसका उत्तर जान लें The direct sentence is Teacher told the boys The earth revolves around the sun And the indirect sentence is Teacher told the boys that The earth revolves around the sun So as this is a universal fact the reporting speech will remain the same. You will not change the tense. Let's go to the next sentence. Tumne mujhe kaha, main kaam kar raha hoon. Aur paroksh vaakya hai, tumne mujhe kaha ki tum kaam kar rahe the. Let us see the answer. The direct sentence is, you said to me, I am working. And the indirect sentence is, you said to me that... You were working. Here is another sentence. Prataksh vakya hai, Maine Sita ko kaha, Main aaj nahi aungi. Maine Sita ko kaha ki, Main us din nahi aungi. The direct sentence is, I said to Sita, I will not come today. And the indirect sentence is, I said to Sita that, I would not be coming today. Unhone humse kaha, aap achhe hain. Aur iska paroksh vakya hai, unhone humse kaha ki, hum achhe the. Chaliye iska answer dekhte hain. They told us, you are good. And the indirect sentence is, they told us that we were good. Thank you friends for watching this lesson. I hope it was useful to you. And please do subscribe to our channel, The English Academy.